Come on, man. Come here. Hey. <laughs> hey, man. Chubby. What's up? Everybody got all quiet. Everybody should be happy. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Don't be quiet because I just started talking. I'm ill prepared, but I can tell you I'm really ready to worship today. And everybody should worship today like this is the last time you're going to do it because you don't know. I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade, but when we start, you need to come up here and you need to give him everything that you've got and be thankful that he's here and be thankful that you're here and be thankful that the people around you are here and just give him every bit of glory that you possibly can. Amen? I'm telling you, you won't regret it. Amen? Amen. Hi, Mom. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> uh, so what do we got going on? We got new classes June 15th, right? Where's my, oh, she's, Vivian's talking to Mom. Hmm? Father's Day. Is that the, that's next weekend, isn't it? The 15th. Father's Day. Two weeks. I'm excited for Father's Day. I'm still excited for Father's Day. Me? Or him? Oh, yeah, I did get my Father's Day present already. That's right. Where's my wife? We went to Guitar Center here a few weeks ago, and I've been <laughs> lusting after this symbol for a while, and lo and behold, it's right here. <laughs> But I was firmly told that that was my, my Father's Day present. <laughs> I told her she'd just make enough for last year. <laughs> I got a, we got a couple other spots we can fill up, baby. She's like, nope, nope. <laughs> what else have we got going on? We got, hey, uh, yesterday out here was awesome. I mean awesome. Is Mike here? Where's Mike? He said, what, 183 people were there? 190? Who all helped out? Show me. Stand up. Meals of Grace? Yeah. Who all helped out? Yeah? Give yourselves a hand. Was it awesome or what? <laughs> Praise God. Okay, so what else am I missing? I'm just excited to be here. I just, I, I'll be honest, I don't care about the announcements right now. I'm just glad to be here. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there ain't nothing, huh? I got nothing to look at. What else? Somebody help me out. What is my prayer? When? Every day. Did you do it today? Good. When else? <laughs> Tomorrow, right? Set. Six o'clock. And then if you weren't here this morning, next Sunday at what time? Seven. Very good. What else? Who? Did somebody say breakfast? Who said breakfast? I'm hungry. <laughs> what else? Am I, what am I forgetting? Nada? Where's Pastor Annette? <laughs> hmm? I'm forgetting everything. I'm just up here talking and yucking it up. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry's like, uh. <laughs> uh, what else? Small groups? What small groups? Meeks having fellowship this Friday. Where? Stand up as your small group leader. Oh yeah, Bills also this Friday. Uh. Now, yeah, really, honey? Oh, my gosh. Oh, God. Turn me on, no, no, sure. no, no, no. <laughs> he won't stop. <laughs> no, um, make sure, first of all, if you're a small group leader, make sure. Oh, this is for your mom. My mom in law is the leader. Is she here? Yeah, no. Where's she at? Oh, no. Oh, this is Diane's back here. This extra large. This one. 
this one goes to Diane. There you go. Sorry. If you want a shirt, we're, we are still selling them. We have two boxes full back over here. So if you want uh, a shirt for play for Kimmy, if you order a shirt and didn't get it, it's in that box back there. Hi, Leah. I got done toting them around. Put those in there too. I just saw those. Okay. Um, but um, if you're if you're a small group leader, first of all, you need to email me your schedule for this month, what you're doing when you're meeting. Because um, I know that some of y'all are changing things up. So if you are used to going to small group on that third, yeah, Jackson, whoa, how's your head? He fell down and bumped his head. It was very large. <laughs> oh. But um, anyways, make sure you go online, check the calendar. I'll make sure that all that's updated this week so that you can um, check that out. And mark your calendars on June 28th, uh, Whitley. Casey will be here um, doing a CD release uh, worship set for his new CD Whispers. So it's a free event, so invite all your friends. He's really awesome. We have a great time when he's here. So he'll be here the 28th at 7, right, or 6, 6 o'clock. Um, and then on that Sunday, we have a special speaker from Africa coming, so we're real excited about that. So mark your calendars for that. Other than that, we're done, I think. Yeah. Oh, new classes start June 15th. So they are loaded into your community point. You can use your app. What? Yes, you can use your app um, to um, register for classes. Calling Committed is starting. Um, uh, the Tabernacle of David. And the third one escapes me now. Firm Foundations. Yeah, that's it. No, we're probably doing that next weekend. So, so all right. Anyways, register online. No, it's ne we're doing it next weekend. Thank you. Hey, um, the two things were happening yesterday. Meals of Grace, which we fed 400 people and ministered to 400 people. And Feast of Hopes, which 190 people were there. And uh, what happened, the, the awesome thing that happened during that time, we, we, we have an awesome bunch of people that come to minister at Meals of Grace. We got done early. They needed help at Feast of Hopes. Our team goes over there and just starts helping them. They just started helping. I had to, I, I had to pull them away because it was time to go. I was just very proud of them that they just jumped right in there. But um, I'm not up here just about Mills of Grace, but it, wa it was awesome yesterday. And we have a dying and broken world out there. We have the spirit of the living God inside of us. And he's given us the power to do something about it. Amen. And then what I wanted to talk about today is that I was thinking about when I was a children's minister about, I was, for about 12 years, um, I had a lot of issues, still have issues. Amen. <laughs> but when I, uh, when I grew up, I was a child of uh, abuse, poverty, drugs, and abuse. So I had a lot of things I was carrying around with me. When I started ministering to children, outreach children, that had the same problems as I did, God healed me while I ministered to them. And there's a lot of people who have issues. There's a lot of people who have depression. There's a lot of people that have a lot of going on. 
If you start ministering to people, God's going to take care of those issues, and God's going to heal you. Amen. This is a promise. Also, when we started Meals of Grace, when I came to this church very sick with chronic fatigue syndrome, the deeper I have a relationship with God, the more he's healing me more and more each day. I've been wanting to walk this three-mile loop for five years now, and I haven't been able to because of, of an illness. And this last weekend, I walked it twice, and I didn't get sick. Amen. You know what? That may be tiny. That might be tiny to you, but when you haven't been able to do something for five years, it's huge. Amen. It's huge. But what I want to challenge you, and what God spoke to me today, is that. Ask God to give you someone to minister to. He will, if you are serious, he will give you someone to minister to. But I want to warn you, it's not always someone you want. <laughs> um, this last person, I, I told God, I just, I just want to walk in love no matter what. I want to walk in love no matter what. It's what I've been praying. And, and uh, he gave me a new person. And I was like, Really? You're going to have to change my heart for her because I have a lot of issues with her. And uh, I had to pray about it for a while, and God did change my heart. And someone came up to gossip about her, and I said, you know what? I can't talk about her because God's convicted me, and I can't. I said, she's a broken person, and she needs help. And so I've started my relationship with her, but I'm, I'm putting a challenge out to you. I don't care if it's a checker at the grocery store, someone at work, somebody you see every day. It, ask God to give you someone and your issues, and if you want to be healed, it will happen. Because he promises that. And all those issues that seem so gigantic in your life will become nothing because you are ministering the living God to someone else. Amen. 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 Woo. <clears throat> come on, stand up. Praise and worship, come on. Oh, I, I needed to do something real quick. I forgot. Lori, can you come here? Now, despite what her husband thinks, doesn't she look lovely in her new dress? Just, just, just do this. Just. <laughs> Bill was complaining about her dress, and every time she turns around, she's getting complimented on it. On this morning, so what does he know? Amen. Amen. He chose her, so that's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right. Let's uh, reach over and grab your neighbor's hand. <clears throat> Okay, come on. We got. We, it's it's the it's the religious part. We got to get serious. All right, let's bow our heads, dear Heavenly Father. We just ask that this morning you would have your way in this place, sweet Holy Spirit. We invite you to fill this place with the glory of God. You would anoint us to break through barriers, to break through bondages, and to break through attitudes, break through sin, come into the heavenlies, come into the courts of heaven with thanksgiving and praise, and have an encounter with you this morning like we have never. Sweet Jesus, 
we desire to lift you up and have all men come to you. Father, we just ask that as we bring our tithe and our offerings, our gifts, Father God, our blessings, returning back unto you what you've given unto us, only a portion of you, as you have described, we ask, Father God, for favor on that money. We ask that, Father, it be blessed in this house, and we ask that it be multiplied, and we ask for every business deal that we do, we have favor. And, Father God, for those that are bringing forth their gifts, that, Father, you said you would redeem their, their, their finances, Father God. And we ask as they give forth uh, 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 over and above their tithe, Father God, we ask for a hundredfold return on that investment, Father God, into the kingdom. We ask, Father, for your blessing. And, Father, for those that do not know the, 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 the finances of the kingdom, Father God, we ask that they be enlightened and they understand that it's about you and them. It's not about them and us. Father, we just ask that you have your way today. Bless this offering. Bless this time. And help us to put aside everything. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Bring your tithes and offerings to these bowls up front. If you would like, come up here and worship with us. Let's put it up to God this morning. Come on, tell him I want to scream this morning.
gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. Come on, awake, awake. Come on. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. I know. Come on, declare it. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna Come be on. an awakening. Every voice, we declare it. We declare. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. I do. Come on, do it again. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. I do. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. I do. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening, I know. Do it again, there's gonna be. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening, I know. Yes, we believe. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. There's gonna be an awakening. Come on, we break it off. Cause I am royalty. I have destiny. I have been set free. I'm gonna shake. Come on, we break it off. Cause I am royalty. I have destiny. I have been set free. I'm gonna shake. Come on, we break it off. Cause I am royalty. I have desti
destiny I have been set free I'm gonna shame this story I have royalty I have destiny talking to you.
Come on, we've declared what we want to do. Now let's declare for him to come. Jesus. 
Come on. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Oh, we recognize you. Yes. Because yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. We acknowledge you. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Oh, yours is the kingdom. Yours is the kingdom. Dear Heavenly Father, we truly desire to change a nation. And we truly want your kingdom to come. That's the cry of this church, Father. It's for your kingdom to come and for us to shake a nation starting in this house and then in our homes and then where we go to school and where we go to work and where we go to shop our city our neighboring cities our state 
our nation and other nations. Your kingdom come, Father, in us and through us. And all God's people said, amen and amen. You can hug your neighbor and tell him you love him. I'll be honest with you. I'd rather just sing all, all day, but some of you can't handle that. Do I need to separate you two? Everybody around you is shaking their head yes. Just want to let you know that. Turn with me, if you would, to Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. It's King James, share. I guess you could put last week's message with this week's message. I didn't really intend it that way, but if it works out that way for you, good. If not, you can work it however you need to. I love the fact when um, <clears throat> it's kind of empty in here, and then by the time praise and worship's over, all the scragglers get in. And I'll be glad when the regular members get back, because we'll be a full house then yeah. with all you guests. Welcome. Uh, Oh, I didn't do the religious thing. Close your eyes. <clears throat> Two. You want some? Oh, how do I want to do this? Okay, let's just get started. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, stay right there. Uh, let's just read one through eight, and then we'll come back. Let's do that. Shut up. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river of Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake forsake thee be strong and of good courage for unto the people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper wherever thou goest this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt 
meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Let's bow our heads again. Lord, dear Lord, I just ask that what you've laid on my heart would be conveyed, and that they would be receivers of your word, and that they would also be doers, and that it would have an effect in their life, and it would change them. And Father, those that are coming into the kingdom, Father God, and, and, and are trying to make a, 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 a way to, to you, Father, that this would be last week's message and this week's message would be a, a process, would be a, a guidepost on what's going on in their life and it would help them to press through and press in to obtain what you have for them. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. Let's go back to verse 1, Sherry. I want to give this to you. Last week I talked to you about that the... Um, Old Testament is an example for us and, and is what happened naturally to the children of Israel, which are the chosen people of God. Uh, that it, it, it's correlation to us in the spirit because we are the children of God now. All right. So the children, the chosen people of God, Israel, is, uh, is a re- natural representation uh, of the spiritual children of God. And whatever happened to them, we can then apply to our lives. So whatever happened to them naturally, we can associate with our spiritual life and our spiritual walk, okay? And the, if you look at the word Israel, it means he will rule as God, prince of God. So what God is telling us that he wants us to be his son, okay? He didn't say, I want you to be my slave. I don't want you to be my stepchild. I want you to be my son. And if you understand a, a Jewish custom and you understand uh, uh, their methods, who they were the chosen people, a son was next in line. It was a builder of the family name, and and the first son inherited everything. And Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the begotten. He is the firstborn. He is the first son. Therefore, all the inheritance is his, and if we are his body and we come into him, then we obtain all those inheritances as well. Amen? All right. So, uh, uh, and, And so we're to rule as God. And a lot of us have a hard problem with that. We just want to be overtaken by our circumstances. We want the the world to dictate what we do, and we want to just get by and get to heaven. I have news for you. Heaven is not a destination. He said we uh, uh, we will go up there for a supper, and then we're coming back down here to rule and reign. And he said that that kingdom come as it is in heaven, so it be in earth. If you're the body of Jesus Christ, then you should be doing everything that Jesus did. Right? You should be raising the dead. You should be opening ears. You should be opening eyes. But the thing is, is we've got too much of the world. And the biggest thing is, is that we want to stay in drawing. You ever fell in love? Those that are married, you better say yes. I didn't say, did you fall out of love? I said, have you fallen in love before? You ever been enamored with someone? There's this this thing that draws you. Every time you turn around, they're there. Some are being stalked, but that's another story. (laughs) If you keep seeing somebody out of the corner of your eye, start praying. Either God's fixing to set you up or... (laughs) I got told to hush. (laughs) Moses means to draw out. Now, after the death of being drawn out, which is the servant of the Lord, see, the drawing is a service of the Lord. It is what gets you coming. It's his goodness, yes, but really what is happening is there's something terrible going on in your life, and you see something good over there, and it's pulling you towards God something happens in our life you could be everything in your life could be perfect I've known I've known people I I knew this lady she had money she had everything and she was empty and she kept getting around and and Annette and her did not like each other in the beginning so Janie I feel your pain or Annette did I've never not liked anybody in my life (laughs) y'all need to read the handbook (laughs) <laughs> Shut up, Judy. But I want you to notice that the servant 
being drawn out is dead. And the Lord spoke to Joshua. Joshua means Jehovah saves. And the word son that is to build or the product of. And the word none is perpetual or eternity. So the product of eternity saves you. And we've got to move past being drawn into full salvation. The problem is, is full salvation to us is getting us out. All of us want to get out. If we've got drug problems, we want to get out. If we've got uh, marital problems, we want to get out. If we've got work problems, we want to get out. If we've got issues in our life, depression, oppression, su uh, suspicion, I don't know, any kind of suspicion, everything coming at you, you want to get out. And you want to be saved. Right? Everybody wants a Savior. I counsel you, I know. It's either save you from your marriage or save you from killing him. Whatever it is, you want to be saved. But not too many of us in here want him as Lord. Y'all looking at me like, where are you going? See, we've got to move past being drawn. We gotta quit flirting with Jesus. We gotta quit playing games, coming in here and getting all excited and tentilated and then walking out and not making a commitment. We gotta make him Lord. Because we cry, see, when stuff is going on and we come up here and it, there, uh, hey, look, if you've got problems, we want to pray for you and we believe that he is the Savior and he can do something about it. Not us. Him. And we want you to get saved. We want you to get out of your issue. We want you to be delivered. But there's a process from being drawn and what feels good and what could cha change something, could fix something for you, could, could make a difference from being drawn to making him Lord that he can then take you into the promised land. Do you want to see that? I mean, can you see that Moses couldn't go in to obtain? See, drawn in doesn't get you the promise. And all of us, in some fashion, some of us have gone in and made him Lord in certain areas and we've, been, we, 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 we've obtained some promises, but there's other things that we're holding back. Some of us is like, no, I just want to be drawn. Just blow me a kiss every once in a while, Jesus. When I get in trouble, send one of them ministers to, to help me get out. Tell me how to, to fix it for right now. Give me a blessing. Come give me a word. Give me a Holy Ghost jerk. Let me do my little snot and routine. Get my hair all beveled. You know, all, I got messed up last Wednesday night. If you missed Wednesday night service, you need to get it on. Man, God, God just body slammed me. I was, I, I, I literally, and he knocked me out. I was, I, he knocked, I was drooling. That's what woke me up. I ain't kidding. I don't play that fake stuff. I ain't going to push you down. If you're going to go down, God's going to knock you down. I felt the anointing. I felt like the healing was in the room. I got oil on my hands. I stood like this, and boom. Boom, and out, drool. I'm like, God, I'm dignified. I'm the leader. I can't be drooling on the stage. I done forgot where I was going. I forgot. Huh? Not drooling. You, you have an encounter. You have, you have, have this drawing, this, this thing, but, but it doesn't. It's, it's not enough to make your full commitment. And see, you look at other people's lives. You know, Annette and I get this all the time. And I'm, 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 listen, I'm, I got all kinds of issues, all right? <laughs> One of them is retarded sons. <laughs> and I got plenty of them. So if anybody needs one, let me know. You made me forget where I was going again. I have plenty of issues. So what I'm about to say, thank you. 
Who said this? She's over here. Thank you, Michelle. I, I, I'm, I, seriously, I'm not bragging. It, it's, it's the office, okay? It, it's the office, and, and it's the anointing, and it's God. But I have people that just want to get around us. Like, I want what you got. And they think just because they spend time with us, it's going to change them. They don't, they don't know the sacrifice. They don't know what it costs to get. Now, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess some of you religious folks up right now. I, no, I'm sorry. I'm saying sorry right now before I even say it. Just love me through it. I suck as a pastor and as a leader. That's the way I feel. But I know that there's an anointing on my life. And I know that, that in this office, and there's a call on my life, and he uses me despite me. I look in the morning every morning, and go, I mean in the mirror every morning and go, what are you doing, God? I don't even want to be around you half the time. Some of you, I know that hurts your feelings, but <laughs> look, be real. You don't want to be around me. You get around me, it's like, God, he's God. I got to get away from him. But there's a drawing of that anointing, and it's not me. It's not my personality. It's not anything about me. It's the anointing on me. And that's the thing. When people start being witnessed to and they start being told about God, there's an anointing on it and there's a drawing to it and there's a desire for it because it feels good. God is full of pleasures evermore. If you think sex, drugs, and rock and roll can give you pleasures, get a moment with the Holy Ghost and you'll never want anything else again. I've been high on some stuff. And nothing has ever compared to an experience and an encounter with Jesus Christ. Now that doesn't mean that my flesh hasn't risen up again. And I forgot what I got before. See, some people will preach to you once you had it that you'll never want it again. And that's true in the, in, in the, in the moment. But things happen. But see, in that moment when someone is ministering to you when someone's talking to you when you're going through the issue there's a draw but that draw has to die for you to get into the thing that you're feeling you want as you're being pulled it's like this if you got money issues and we start talking to you about tithing we start teaching you about tithing and you start tithing and a little bit a little bit changes but if you don't commit fully into it and tithe all the time and and it becomes who you are you lose that so what you did is you got drawn to the lure of getting money but you didn't get drawn to the allure of being in the kingdom the the draw has to die and jehovah saves has to take over and lead and what that represents is the word of god has to become your gospel and the word of god has to be lord to you See, we get frustrated with God not moving, but the thing is, is we won't make the Word Lord. We hear, we read the Word. And, uh, no, I can't. I got checked. All right. There's an issue in our life, and we, 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 and someone says, you shouldn't be doing that. Well, the, we don't like to hear being told, we don't like to be told what to do. So we start, mm, get out. The drawing's not as, I don't really like you as much as I used to. It's like, you know, that presence that people want to get around us, and then we start talking, and, and the anointing hits, and I start discerning stuff in people's life, and I start saying, well, you need to do this, and you need to do that, because that's the way I am. I'm cut to the taste, rip the Band-Aid off, and let's move on, because I ain't got time to, to butter your butt. That's who I am. If you need someone to love you and sit in the field for you with hours, that's known as job. And Lorinda's job. You want to get it fixed? You come to me and well, this is what it is and let's go. Because that's the way I was taught. That's the way my daddy did me. I, that's who I am. It doesn't change. 
And so when that begins to happen, uh, uh, the, draw, the luster's not there. Pastor's a jerk. <laughs> Ask Lorinda. And it wasn't just jerk in her mouth either. It's like, oh, he's so, God's just all over him. I hate your butt. I know. Because that luster draws off. But the thing is, is the, she made God Lord. And she looked past my stuff, went to the treasure and said, the Lord is speaking. You've got to make the Lord your Savior. Not the drawing. Verse 2. I spent a lot of time on that one. I better hurry up. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I will give unto thee, unto the children of Israel. Remember, the children of Israel. Israel represents to rule as God. And the, there's 12 tribes of Israel, plus two sons that were from Joseph that gets added into this thing. Uh, and And... And what I want to show you here is, is that, that I will give unto you the land, the territory that I promised in the drawing. Okay? Remember, he said, Moses, my servant, the thing I used to draw you that you started seeing promises for, I'm going to give to you. But you have to go over this Jordan. That's the only way that you can get to this promised land is over Jordan. And Jordan is descend, is the descender. Notice that he says arise, go therefore to descend. So the action that you have is going to lift you up, but it's going to seem like you're going down. It's going to seem like you lose all your friends. But what you're going to realize if you'll keep going is they really weren't friends. They were just using you for something. And then you will get into the friends of the kingdom. You'll get rid of the family, but what you'll understand is what has your blood really ain't who you are. And what has the spirit of the God, it will, you will become into the family that is yours. So what seems like descending is really arising. And I will give to you, to the children of Israel. Verse 3. Every place that the sole of your feet shall tread, upon that I have given unto you, as I said when I was drawing you. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do it this way. If... What God is saying, if you walk all this area right here, well, I've done walk most of it already, so it's already mine. Uh, so you walk over that. He says, this is what I'm going to give you. Every place that your soul treads, every place that you walk. I want you to know that word every place means every place that you take a stand. Stand, therefore. Every place that you take a stand with the word of God, I'm going to give to you. Every place that you take a stand with the Word of God. When someone comes against you about the thing and, and, and you make a stand, I'm going with Jesus, he's going to give you that land. Every time something comes against you and you say, I'm going to do what Jesus tells me to do, he's going to give that to you. Every place that you make a stand and say, I'm not going back to the drugs, I'm not going back to the sex, I'm not going back to this, I'm not going back to that, I'm moving forward, that is the place that he's going to give you. Now, I, now, when it says the sole of your foot, and some of you, I, I, it means curved out. It actually means cupped. And that place tread, what it really means is receive. So as you're stepping, it's the same thing as God pouring into your hand and you're grabbing That word sole of your foot, it really means genitals. It's the place of producing. I don't make this stuff up. I research it out and the words break down that way, okay? Understand that. 
See, when we come together as humans, we procreate and we produce. When we allow the Holy Spirit to place a seed into us, it produces that thing in our life. Just like Mary, they put Jesus in her, and she, a human, produced Jesus. The same thing with you. When the Word of God comes into you, and you let it come to fruition, it produces the character of Jesus. Amen? So, in other words, you're not... You're not going to just get it poured on you. you got to go make a stand. So every issue that's coming at you is a place for you to maintain or obtain what God has for you. Not a place of retreat. So every obstacle, everything that's coming at you is not a place of causing you to back up. It should be a place of you grabbing hold of and grabbing more territory. So every challenge that comes at you, kids, everything that gets poured at you is a place for you make, to make a stand. And receive what God has for you. See, if you've got an issue with money and you're like, I ain't giving it to the church. I don't spend too much. Look, I make, I make less than, I make half of what I used to make doing this. Okay? So I didn't make this to rob you. And I get a portion of, uh, to pay my salary and I, and I have a multiple pastors. I, I look at this different. I'm not looking at the be the first, uh, the only one. I want multiple pastors, so I'm trying to pay as many as I can to get in to help me carry this load because my desire is to do what God's called me and be a, 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 a apostolic church and, and do it like they did it when they first started. So it's not going to be a great big salary for me and little junk. So the money's not about me. It's about you. And as you learn that truth and get a hold of that and receive that and make a change in your life. Now, as you receive that, whatever it is, as you make that stand, someone talks to you about money, it's like you back up and you're like, no, 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 I can't do it. I got my bills. As someone asked me the other day, should I pay tithes before I have bills? I'm like, that's a long question. You know, the, the thing is, this is the thing, you should be tithing. But if you don't have any money to pay tithes and you owe people money, God wants you to pay those people. But if you're two years down the road and you're still paying the people, it's time to make some changes. The other thing is, is okay, you don't want to tithe, but you have a cigarette pro, uh, uh, issue, snuff, drinking, going out to eat. Cable. Oh, no, cable is, we're supposed to have that. That's, that's, that's. The four basic food groups, isn't it? <laughs> and a telephone. Got to have a telephone. What gets me is people are broke and got a phone. And want to come to me for money. Oh, you messed up with that accusation, didn't you? We believe in America that this is God. We're entitled to this. No. This is a pleasure. They'll give me a fee if I cancel it. Exactly. They'll give me a fee if I cancel it, but it's going to cost me $40,000 to keep it and only $5,000 to let it go. I, look, I, I want you to have a phone. I want you to have internet. I want, to have, I want you to have cable. I want you to have the nice big house. But you got to accept the word, not just the drawing. This, I, I'm sorry I went that way because I really, it's, this ain't about money. I, I, I really, I'm, it's not. We're not in trouble. We're, I, I'm not trying to drum up some money. But money's the easiest one because that's, that's, that's what a lot of, all of us, I mean, we got to eat, right? Some of us eat more than others, amen? Some of us got to look good. Some of us, it takes a lot to look good. Some of us, not so much. Everybody's looking over at their neighbor. I know which one you are. <laughs> but as you, you come up to that, and then he, I'll say 10%, 10%. 10%, that make, that, that's a lot. It's all his. It's all his. All of it is. If you see that 10% is to say it's yours. That's all he's saying. He's saying, he's saying the 10% says it's mine. And when you do that, then he redeems the rest. Now, last time I said this, I'm going to be careful because then 
Satan started messing with me, but, but actually that was fixed right away. So we don't have anything that breaks down. I remember when I first started, every time, every time I turned around, something was breaking down. And I was struggling to pay that tithe. Now I don't even think about it. It's the first thing that comes out. And you say, well, you got older and more mature. No, I didn't get more mature. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> I got a witness. Amen. But that word, the drawing of, okay, Pastor Rick has a, a nice house, nice cars, and he seems to be doing good, and, you know, uh, uh, man, I, I had just got to get next to him. There's just something about him, and, and then, okay, you got financial problems? Okay, this is what you need to do. You need to pay t- 10% tithes. You need to cut out the, the, the things, the, all these other things, yeah, whatever it is, and start moving forward. And then, but see, that's got to be a witness in you, because I could tell you to get rid of the cable, and God hadn't told you to get rid of the cable. See, I've got to discern what I feel like God's telling you, and I say that, and then it has to bear witness with you, and then you've got to be obedient to it. Because really what I'm telling you should be already what God's been dealing with you about. We, we just don't want to admit it. That's the thing. We don't want to admit that that's what God's dealing with us about. And then for us to say it, then that just ticks us off because now it's out there. Before it was just in my head. Now someone has said it. No, now I've got to do it. That gets us even more mad, and we run. Right? It's like, you know, you know you're not supposed to do that. You call a friend up and say, no, you shouldn't do that. <clears throat> call another friend. <laughs> the one you like more, the one that does like you, and the one that's sinning more than you are. I got this feeling. No, come on, let's go, let's go do it. All right. Got my answer. Thank you, Jesus. Every place that we make a stand and receive, he's going to give to us. Verse 4. I just got thrown on the bus by my own wife. All right. We'll finish with, no, we won't. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even into the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and into the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall you shall be your coast. From the wilderness, that means to arrange your speech. That word wilderness means to arrange your speech. And that word Lebanon, it means, ha- uh, it means heart and it means white. So I'm going to change your heart to purity and it's going to change the way you talk. Because out of the mouth, the heart, the abundance of the heart speaks. And whatever you speak, life or death, that shall you have. So the first thing that he wants to do is he wants to change the way you talk. But the way he changes the way you talk is not the way uh, uh, in your conversation, it's in your heart. And then he says from the great river, the river, when he says river twice, it's important. River means prosperity. From double fruit, from double prosperity to the Euphrates. Euphrates means fruitfulness. So I'm going to change your heart, change the way you speak, and then you're going to be double fruit. And be prosperous all the way through the territory of the Hittites. The Hittites means terror. Everything that brings you terror, everything that's trying to take away from you brings you terror, whether you believe it or not. But that thing that's issue in your life, whatever's going on in your life, there's a terror with it. You may not think, oh, scary, Terry, but you it is something that is causing you to be afraid. Maybe your house, maybe uh, your car, it may be your children, it may be your relationship, it may be your job, it may be whatever. Whatever's coming against you, he says, I'm going to give you that territory. Yes, I'm glad somebody's getting it. This is a promise from God, taking you from the place of being drawn to God into the place of getting and obtaining the promises that he has for you. I'm tired of us living outside uh, of the promised land, sitting there going, ooh, i got to feel good from God. Because the feel-good doesn't last. It doesn't keep the seats full. Why? Because the people get discouraged because they leave because they didn't get what they needed. And the reason why they didn't get what they needed is because they wanted to be drawn. They didn't want to be make him Lord. And when you make him Lord, then you obtain the promised land. Now that to the great sea is what roars up 
and going down of the sun. As you break down the going down of the sun, what that means is the entrance, and it means a narrow entry. You say, well, what does that mean? The entrance is a narrow entry, and it's, that's what borders you. When it says your coast, that means your borders. So what he's saying is the entry to obtaining a changed heart that causes you to change, change the way you speak, which then causes you to be prosperous twice and be very fruitful, comes from coming to a place of a small entrance, and that is your border for everything that you do. And that is Jesus Christ, the Lord, Jehovah saved, the Word of God directing your life. Because it says, narrow is the uh, straight, what is it? Let me read that. Go to Matthew chapter um, 7, verse 13. Dang, I didn't even come back to my notes. That's good. I'm doing good today. Matthew seven thirteen. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. But, and many be there, go, be there be which go in thereat. Whatever, I just messed up. Verse 14. But, 14, 14, 14, now. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads to life, and few that there can be that, have, have, that find it. So what it's saying is, is it's going to be a narrow gate. He's going to tell you, get rid of them. He's going to tell you, stop doing that. He's going to tell you, do this. It's going to be a narrow enclosure. That's going to enclose your life. But it's going to get you to have, have the territory, everything that comes and, and gives you terror. And every place that you want to be prosperous in, he says, I'm going to give it to you. But the only way that you're going to get it is if you go to this place where there's a narrow gate. See, there is a promise that God is telling us that I'm going to give you the promised land, but it doesn't come through you doing what you want to do. It only comes with doing it how he wants it done. If it doesn't and it wouldn't, he, we wouldn't need a God. And I'm not yelling at you because I'm mad at you. I'm yelling at you because I want you to obtain the blessings of life. I want you to get past of living paycheck to paycheck. I want you to get past of being sick all the time. I want you to get past being down, depressed, and oppressed. I want you to grab hold of the king has come to give you a promise. Go to uh, verse 5, 6, wherever we're at. Verse 5, Joseph, I mean Joshua, chapter 1, verse 5. Come on, i got to hurry now, it's 12, and I'm getting tired. There shall not be any man able to stand, therefore, before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. No man, all right, what comes against us when we got bill collectors? A man. What comes against us when we have oppression, depression, or whatever? Some man has hurt us, right? So when we talk about man, it's one man's too, because they do most of the hurting. Amen? Men, can I get a witness? Amen. Thank you. He says, no man can stand before us. No one will be able to stand before us. He says, I will not fail thee or forsake thee. What that means is I will not relinquish or slacken. So whatever you go to make a stand for and receive, you're making a stand, nothing can stand before you. Even though they're right there, you're still going to obtain what God has for you. He says, I'm going to give it to you. Verse 6. And yes, I'm going to do all eight, smart butt. He says, be strong and of good courage. He says, that word be strong is fasten and seize. Fasten and seize and good courage means alert. For, so be, so fasten a hold of what I just said, seize it, and be alert. I'm standing, and I'm being alert. I'm standing here to make a, re- a reception. Some man's coming and get me, c- coming to, to me, and he's telling me, oh, oh, come on, you, we can go party. All right, come on. 
Yeah, just one hit. It'll be okay. Come on, come on. Just charge one more thing. It's all right. Just cheat on her. It's okay. Just feel your pleasures. It's all right. No, fasten and seize the narrow gate. That means I can't do these things and I can't do that. It's a narrow way. It's not the same way everybody else gets to go. That, that gate is wide and broad. They can do whatever they want to do. But I want to attain something that is eternal. I want to get something from the, from that is perpetual, that's going to last, that's going to go to the fire, it's going to be consumed, and it's going to still be standing there. Not all this other junk that's going to be hay and stubble. To this people shall I divide for an inheritance this land, which I swore to give to their fathers. All right, this people, he's talking about Israel, right? So Israel is made up of 12 tribes and two grandsons. That makes up Israel. So if re Israel represents us, each son represents a characteristic. So if the 12 sons, the two grandsons, make up Israel, and Israel is the rule of God, and we're children of God, and that's our example, then the 12 sons, who they are and what they do, is an example to us, right? And that translates from natural to spiritual, so it translates to characteristics. So he says, fasten and seize what I've just told you, and be alert. For unto this people, for unto these characteristics in you, I'm going to give this territory to you, which I swore to give to their fathers. To Reuben, which means able to see. To Simeon, which is able to hear. Levi is to attach to, to grab hold of. Judah is to praise. Dan is for judgment. Naphtali is wrestling. Gad is to, to for, for good for, fortune or invade. For, to, it's like when you need to go get something, you can go get it. Asher is happy. And I've heard the, the, the preaching on happy and happy stance, happenstance and all that other stuff, but th there is a happiness in God, amen? There's a joy in God, and there's a happiness as, as well, amen? And then there's uh, uh, Issachar, which is the reward. You receive what you are due, amen? And dwelling, Places where you are, reside or inhabit, all right? And then Joseph, which means to increase. So I, I'm going to give you increase. And then his two sons, Ephraim, which is fruitful, and Manasseh is cause you to forget where you were. And then Benjamin is the son of the right hand, which means the strength, the power. So what he just said is if be, fasten and seize and be alert. Stand here, receive, and make a stance and receive what God's given you. And I'm going to change your heart and make it pure. And I'm going to cause you to speak my words. And when you do, I'm going to cause you to be able to hear, to be able to see, to be able to, to uh, uh, go in and, and, and take territory. I'm going to cause you to be happy. I'm going to cause you to increase. I'm going to cause you to be fruitful. I'm going to cause you whatever you're wrestling with to win. I'm going to cause you to make good judgments. I'm going to cause you to be able to praise. Even when you ain't supposed to be praising. See, it's easy to praise when everything's going good, but I'm going to give you when it ain't looking good that you can still praise. Verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. Now, he just told you, I'm going to change your heart. I'm going to make you prosperous. I'm going to make you double fruitful. You've got to come into a place that's narrow, though, and I'm going to cause you to be able to see, hear, attach, praise, judge, wrestle, invade, be happy, have a reward for what you're doing, dwell in some place and not roam, cause you to increase, cause you to be fruitful, cause you to forget, and cause you to have power. I'm going to, have you, I'm going to do that for you. I'm going to take you into the promised land, and that's what God is saying to us today. That's what he's saying for you. 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 That's what he's saying for all of you. He's telling you this morning, I've come to give you a promised land. Stop just being drawn. Be taken. Stop playing around and flirting with God and giving him your all. 
He says, be thou strong and very courageous. It says only, that word only means limit yourself. Be lean. Be strong, which is to seize and fasten. And again, courage is be alert. So you can observe the word that is narrow. So limit yourself to fastening and seizing and being alert. Only limit yourself to fastening and seizing and being alert. That doesn't leave anything else out or room for anything else. That thou mayest observe to do according to the law. The law is the word of God with the spirit of God on it. Which Moses, my servant, was drawing my servant, commanded thee. See, when you're being drawn is when you get told what you're supposed to do. Doesn't mean that you're doing it, but you get told. Then the drawing, you get, you get the instruction. See, it doesn't change until you make him Lord. See, that, this is in, in, in the salvation, but it's also in everything that goes on in your life. Everything that means, needs to change in your life, you're getting drawn to it. But it doesn't change, and you can't get the promise until you step into, just like the cross. From down to up, you got to go through the heart. From left to right, you got to go through the heart. you got to make him Lord over your heart. You can't be just drawn, and like the ooh, the promises sound great. There's a price to pay. You got to die. Don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. But keep going. That I make every way that you go prosper. You got issues in your life? Do you want to prosper? There's a word of God that is there for you to obtain that promise in your life. But you got to make it Lord, it can't just be Savior. Verse 8, this book shall not depart out of thy mouth. What's that saying is that word shall not stop coming from your mouth. We should be talking Jesus all the time. People that talk Jesus all the time that get on your nerves, you need to check yourself because they're obtaining a promise and you're not. If you're talking about other things, I guarantee you, you're going down the wrong road. It should be Jesus that and Jesus this and Jesus that and Jesus this. And you say, well, you're making me a fanatic. Well, I'm just trying to get you the promised land. I'm trying to get you out of being drawn. And if you want the fullness, see, you're trying to get, you're believing him to get you to heaven and you still live in hell. He doesn't leave you there. He takes you out. The thing is, is that his benefits package is awesome. That thou may observe to do according all that is written. He says, meditate on it day and night. Day and night is daily, and night means when things come that are tough. In other words, when it gets dark, don't stop meditating on what he said. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and you shall have good success. How many wants to prosper? How many wants to have good success? How many wants to see? A change. And you're, some of you are going, I don't, I don't have any problems. Well, they're coming. You know, you, you may have just the problem of, of being a kid and not getting what you want. It's like I tell my son all the time, just tell the truth and do what you're supposed to do. You'll get everything out of me. Does he learn that lesson? Our daddy's the same way. You listen to what he says, tell the truth, and do what you're supposed to do. Everything is in our grasp. He said, everything is yes and amen. The part that he didn't say that is in there understood, you got to die. You got to die to your opinion. You got to die to your will. You got to die to your thought process and obtain the promises. Are you tired of where you're at? Do you want to obtain what God has for you? He's telling you today, be strong, be courageous. Fasten and seize what I just said. Be alert and go make a stand and receive. Amen. Doesn't that sound simple? Doesn't it?
you know it's not going to be that easy, right? You know there's going to be a fight. Because every fr- it's like you're trying, to quit, you're trying to quit doing drugs. Every friend you got is going to come with free stuff this week. You, you try to stop eating, everybody's going to try to take you out to eat. You try to stop drinking, someone's going to come buy you drinks. Never bought a drink in his life. You're going to try to stop looking at porno sites? Every commercial is going to have that Victoria's Secret, every other one. Well, I should probably do something for the dudes, but I don't know what that is, so. It's going to be a fight. It's going to make a stand. The thing is, is that you've got to receive nothing that comes against you. No man that comes against you. And let me tell you, the advertising agencies, they are the man. Nothing can make a stand against you. You shall receive. If you stay in the narrow gate, bow your heads. Father, Give me two more minutes. Keep your head down. I didn't say raise. God, y'all are nosy. Keep your head down. I want you. I want you. If, 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 if you are struggling. And you've been drawn to God a couple times and you're being drawn now or you just got through being drawn. Kind of quit. Because you got to a place of making a stance. But you hear now the fight and you hear the process. Today spoke to you. And I'm not just talking about salvations. But if there is... I, I, if there is salvation, when I, when I pray this, I want you, you two come up here. James and Melinda, come up here. I want you to come right over here by the youth where James and Melinda are going to be, and I, I want them to introduce you to Jesus. But I want you to raise your hand this morning if God was talking to you, if you're in that fight, in that battle, to obtain the promises, and you keep being drawn, and you're drawn mightily and and, and, and in that drawing, you never make him Lord. Now, I'm not just talking about his Savior, but, uh, you know, and, and getting saved. I'm talking about, you know, it was in your finances. It was in your, your, your whatever that battle that you're going for or through. Keep your hands up. If God's talking to you this morning, I want you to stand. Now that you've raised your hand, I want you to stand. Okay, guys that are here that aren't raising their hand right now, I want you to see, open your eyes and look around you, and I want you to put your hand on these folks, okay? If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want to know him as I'm praying, I want you to come up here with James and Lorinda. Okay, as, as we begin to pray, we're going to believe that the drawing is going to stop and you're going to make Lord Savior, Okay? You're going to make Him Lord. You're going to make Him Lord over the situation in your life. Not because you're condemned. Not because you're dirty. Not because you're bad. Not because no one loves you. Not because you're not worthy of anything. But because there's a promise that Satan's trying to take away from you. There's a promise that God has for you. A promise that God wants to give to you. And Satan's trying to keep it from you. That's what we're talking about this morning. We're not talking about you being ugly. We're talking about you being beautiful. And the King of Kings has come to deliver you into the promised land. But you can't just be drawn with just good words and feel good. you got to make Him Lord. you got to make a stance. So, Lord, we lift up these folks this morning. Father, I know there's some stuff in my own personal life that I need to make you Lord over. i got to stop being drawn by the promises of doing this or doing that. So, Father, we all stand here this morning. And those that have this issue, Father God, that have, 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 have been honest, Father, because I believe there's many in here that weren't honest, that they got some issues, they just didn't want everybody else to know. 
So, Father, for those that were afraid to step forward, to, to open up and let people see, and for the ones that did, I ask, Father God, that you come in. You open to us, Father God, first, that thing that's drawing us and make us understand that it's got to die. Then, Father God, I ask that you give us the strength. Holy Spirit, we ask that you come. We ask that you come and empower them. Fill them to overflowing that they can make the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of God, director and king in this situation. And in doing so, Father God, they can come over to the promised land. They can go take it. They can go get what you've called them to have. Father, if it's freedom from drugs, if it's freedom from alcohol, if it's freedom from addictions, if it's freedom from attitudes, if it's financial issues, if it's marital issues, if it's relation issues, job, social, whatever, Father, in their lives, we ask, Father, that you touch them and they come in and obtain what you've given them. See, it's already given. We just got to stand and receive. Father, we say it be done and be so in their lives this morning. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Can you hug someone and tell them you're glad they were here this morning? Can you tell them that you're glad that they were brave enough to make a stand? That they were brave enough to, to, to stand up and say, I need help. I want you to love people. I want you to tell them you're glad they were here today. I want you to go get some people that haven't been here in a while. And tell them, come back. We love you. Have a good day.